I heard of the story. Um, I remembered it vaguely, um, but uh, I think it was 1983 or four. So I was about the age of, you know, Cindy Paulson. I was about 17 or 18 back then. So I was the age of one of his uh, victims. Uh, but I remember hearing a story about a guy who, you know, they sensationalized it, uh, like that he went out and hunted people and did these things, and you know, they turned him into a real uh, ogre and monster, and um, and he certainly was those things. But you know, then when Scott sent me the script, I was very interested in wanting to meet Scott and see what kind of person he was, because there's a certain type of person that you know you don't want to make a film with about something like this, because. You know, they might be interested in the action elements, or they might think it's cool, and you know all that film stuff. And you know, I don't know, I wouldn't want to do that. Um, so I sort of pushed it away because I thought, you know, it would have to be the right circumstances to do it, because I didn't want to. It's a very dark subject matter. So, but Scott seemed to really want to tell the story of the the um, system really sort of failing. Um, these prostitutes out here because they really at that time they were really not really seen as people in a way um, or they weren't seen as equal people they were seen as sort of you know vagrants and some were missing but so it was a it was a it was so he was telling it from the right perspective and um, and then I said well there's a couple things I wasn't comfortable with because even though they happened I didn't want to um, show it and um, then he sort of worked with me on that a little bit, and and then Nick came on board, and people started coming on board. So then it started taking a little bit of momentum, and uh, um, no, this is a very, 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 very dark human being. When I when I met Glenn, you know, and I, and I started thinking about Hanson, you know, they they were just almost like um, uh, opposites in a way that were. It was like they were sort of this, the same in some interesting ways. One w on, on opposite sides of the, the spectrum. One was um, completely, you know, courageous and self-absorbed, narcissistic, feeding all of his most debased fantasies. Um, but a brave, courageous guy. I mean, he would fly these super cubs out into snowstorms and go up the top of mountains and to hunt doll, ball sheep, doll sheep with bows and arrows. I mean, he was, he was a, he was, you know, crazy uh, guy. And, but Glenn is um, like a, a history teacher, English teacher. He's a very gentle man, very thoughtful student of history, but he's got a fierce kind of will to him. And he just became obsessed with getting this guy and um, became very personal. And then I think he actually wanted to, face this guy and try to get, um, figure out why, like he has a serial killer and he really wanted to understand why they're doing it or how they can stop him in the future. And I think he, even though he caught Hanson, I think he, Glenn felt like he'd failed because he couldn't, you know, when you've tried to grasp evil, you know, you, you don't ever get the answer you want. You don't ever, we don't get the answer we want. It's still, at the end of the day, we still feel like we got scarred by the confrontation and maybe we put this guy away, but we, you know, it didn't reveal its, he didn't reveal its secrets. He was still amorphous and vacuous and he still were staring into an abyss. So I think it's a very interesting relationship, this relationship between this cop and Hanson. And yeah, he's, he's, a, he's, a, he's got a really good mind and a, a great disposition. Uh, you know, he feels like he's, it's a privilege to do this for a living and to get, be able to make films and, you know, treats people with respect and, and uh, he's collaborative. So, you know, that's always good too because a lot of people who first start doing this, they think, okay, in the script or in the, their mind they had it this way, but then they have all these actors and other people and other people have ideas and some people can't really make the, they can't make the leap from what they had in their mind to, you know, an, another kind of organism with other people. That, but he's very adept at, at incorporating other people's enthusiasms and ideas. And so that makes for a very, good process because everybody starts to feel like they own it in some way. I know when um, the filmmakers, sometimes in, in films that don't work, you have the technical department, uh, the camera and the sound and all these other things and that's its own universe and then the acting is another universe and almost it's almost like they don't coexist. 
It's like the acting is something that's done when everybody's finished with their composition and like, you know, the camera and their obsessive compulsive things. And this will, and, and, and those are the films that usually, you know, seem kind of heavy laden. They don't really have that life. And this one, the actors get hot and the camera guys are just following them. And then we going, they, they're, they're coming here with energy. And so they're both meeting head on. And that's um, to Scott's credit for hiring those people. The jock, um, the, uh, the operator um, is incredibly energetic and passionate and very sensitive to actors. And so is the DP. So they're always coming around. They're, they're, they're feeding the actors and the actors are feeding them. And uh, you, that's not actually as common as you would think. And he understands economy very well, so he doesn't overwrite scenes. And he stuck with um, a lot of... Uh, Hansen's dialogue was uh, a lot taken from the transcript, which is very sort of fractured and uh, has its own weird internal logic to it. So he's he just made some very smart decisions about that to like leave those things in and not try to over explain things and and uh, and then um, I think as a writer it's uh, the script um, performs uh, even better than it reads in some ways because sometimes you think okay that might be a little minimalist but then when you get the whole thing it's in context and and you, you get it on its feet you know the, the the scenes are so loaded with backstory that you know he's uh, he did a good job of um, not overdoing scenes and just letting them be, uh, which is kind of a sophisticated thing, you know, for a first-time writer and director. And Nick is a terrific guy, and I've known him for a long time. And you know, he's very, he's very, uh, does all sorts of different films. And and when he uh, when he when he does drama and um, narrows it down and 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 decides to do this type of film, he's terrific in it. He does all different sorts of films too, though. Um, so I, I enjoyed, you know, getting to work with him again and having a few scenes. Uh, I had a day off on Monday, and um, we went with one of the one of the producers and went to a helicopter and took it out. And, you know, half an hour away, you're you're in the North Pole. You're you're on a glacier with some of the most incredible beauty you've ever seen in the world. Half an hour outside Anchorage. So I can only imagine what it's like up here in the summers. I really want to come back. Yeah. So I'm very into this place. Alaska's good, but uh, it'd be fun to come back and not, uh, you know, not equate it with uh, all these murders and stuff. I can't wait. You know, it'd be really fun to come back and um, and not have all this stuff. Thinking about all this stuff.